Hello and thank you for watching. Uh, this video is another on measure of location. Uh, specifically here we're only going to be talking about a mean and in fact we're going to be talking about a specific kind of mean this time called a geometric mean. So a geometric mean versus the arithmetic mean. Now the arithmetic mean is the one that you're probably most familiar with. An arithmetic mean, this is where you're adding together numbers. Uh, let's say I have three observations. So I add together those three observations and I divide by three and this gives me my arithmetic mean, often denoted is x bar. What a geometric mean is now, a geometric mean is one where we aren't adding values together, but instead we're multiplying values together. And we're not dividing anymore by any value, instead we're taking the what we call the nth root of those, uh, uh, the product of those observations. So let's say again I have three observations, so this would be x1, I'm going to use brackets, this means times together to x1, times x2, times x3. Here I have three observations, so I take the third root. And this is what we would call the geometric mean. Now, what is this good for? Well, this is most commonly used uh, for calculating average growth rates. So a growth rate could be any kind of growth rate, a growth rate in gross domestic product, a growth rate uh, in carbon emissions, a growth rate in population. This example here, we're going to be looking at a growth rate of uh, share prices or the value of, of uh, shares. So let me just give a, a quick explanation of how these growth rates uh, are calculated, specifically here are these growth factors. And then uh, you can see how, due to the nature of, of these problems, these numbers are multiplied together. And so a geometric mean is the more appropriate calculation for calculating the average, uh, in this case, uh, average growth rates. So what do I mean uh, when I talk about here a growth factor? The growth factor is the number that if we multiply it by the initial value, so the initial value times the growth factor gives us the value at the end of some period of time. Okay, so if we start, let's just look at Apple here. Let's look at this first entry. So let's start with a hundred dollars. So at the beginning of year one, I have $100 uh, is the value of my shareholdings of Apple stock. Now that grew in that one year period that I gained, let's round it to keep it easy, 26% uh, growth is what I saw in the value. So at the end of that year, I gained 0.26 uh, times 100. Uh, it was, was the, the gains that I earned, or maybe capital gains of, of that stock. Now, before I really do the, the math and, and add this together, let's just rewrite this and factor out the 100. So this becomes 100 times then 1 plus 0.26. And if I just pull this together, this becomes 100 times 1.26. Okay, so right here, 1.26, this is the growth factor. This is the number that I multiply it with the initial value, and it tells me what its value is at the end of that period, in this case, uh, one year. Now, let's do the same thing uh, for year two. Now, at the beginning of year two, I don't have $100. Now I have $100. $100 times 1.26, which is $126, is my value at the beginning of year two. Now, according to my data, I earned 31% on, on that value over the period of one year. So add to that 31% of 126, 
and that will give me the value at the end of year two. Now again, let's go through the same exercise for year two that we did uh, over here for year one. If I factor out that 126, this becomes one plus 0.31, and bringing all that together is 126 times 1.31. So there's that growth factor. 1.31 is my growth factor for year two. Now, what I'm gonna do here is substitute in, so instead of 126, let me substitute in uh, this, this form over here, and I'm gonna bring this up to here. So instead of 126 times 1.31, I'll have 100, which was my initial value at the beginning of year one. Over that first year, it grew by a factor of 1.26, and then over the second year, it grew by a factor of 1.31. So here, now I can see that in order to calculate the value of that asset or the value of uh, that stock or whatever it is we're working with, to calculate the value of that at the end of some number of periods, I'm multiplying it by the growth factors for each of those periods. So if I wanted to know what its value is at the end of year three, well, here's that return at the, uh, over the third year. Here's that growth factor. So at the end of year three, I calculate or I multiply that initial value by the growth factor in year one, growth factor in year two, and here's that growth factor in year three, and that will tell me the value of that share after three years. And so again, here we can see those growth factors are multiplied together. So if I wanna calculate then, well, what's the average growth of that share, of that stock, over some period of time, now we can see that the geometric mean is the appropriate uh, type of calculation because we're dealing with data that multiplies together. It's not added together. So let's, um, let's clear some space and let's just get into, into the calculation. So for Apple, let's do Apple first. So my, my geometric mean, so I'm gonna call this X bar, this is geometric, so I'm gonna denote it with a G, and this is for Apple, so let's put a big capital A there so I can denote this as Apple. So the geometric mean for the growth rate of the Apple stock is, I multiply together all the growth rates, one our growth factors, 1.31, 1.05, 1.25, 1.38 and 1.95. That growth factor is less than one because there we experienced negative growth. So there's the product of my five years of growth factors. Now I take the root of that and in this case I have five observations. So I'm gonna take the fifth root. So now I'm gonna pull out my calculator because I certainly can't do this calculation in my in my head. And so here I'm gonna press this second button because I need to bring up a slightly different set of buttons to work with. So I'm gonna multiply all of my growth factors, 1.26 times 1.31 times 1.05 times 1.38 and times finally 0.95 so that's 2.27, now I wanna take the fifth root of that, so I'm gonna press this button, take the fifth root, and that gives me an average growth factor of one point, oops, 1.18. There we go. An average growth factor of 1.18. Now, in order to get the average, uh, the average rate of return, so to, to express this, as a percentage, well, as you can see here, all of these percentages are just the growth factor minus one. So to get that average percent, 1.18 minus one, get it as a percentage, we can times it by 100. And here I have an average return of 18% over that five year period uh, for the Apple stock. 
Okay, let's do the same for the Microsoft. I'm going to clear myself some space. So for the Microsoft stock, now the exercise is going to be exactly the same. We're going to multiply together our five growth rates. So here, I, let me start over here. So X bar, this is Microsoft, this is geometric. And multiply together 0 0.93, 1.03, 1.4, 1.24 and 1.19 and we are going to take again the fifth root we have five observations and so this is going to be let's get that calculator 0 0.93 times 1.03 times 1.4 1.24 and 1.19, take the fifth root, and I have a value of, let's round it to 1.15. Oops, not 11, 1.15, and so that gives me an average return of 15%. So to answer this question, which stock had the highest average return over this five year period, looks to me like Apple is the winner, 18% over the five years versus Microsoft's 15%. Okay, so I hope that helps uh, with the geometric mean. Uh, the calculations can be a little bit tedious. Um, the trick here is really un uh, understanding when it's appropriate to do an arithmetic mean versus when it's appropriate to do the geometric mean. Um, that will come with practice. Uh, the big difference here is geometric mean. We're multiplying our values together uh, as opposed to adding them together. Okay, so I hope this helps. Thank you for watching.